Hello, this video demonstrates a, an issue that I've been having with a 100 watt MRF 454 amplifier. Here I have a home brewery transceiver that I'm building and I've reached the stage where I need to go from 10 watts, which is what it's putting out at the moment, to 100 watts. So I've built an MRF 454 uh, amplifier. It's a pair of uh, transistors as per the Motorola application notes. Uh, here is the circuit I've been using pair of uh, MRF 454s and a 723 regulator. Fairly basic circuit. However, I'm having some issues with it right at the moment. The intermodulation distortion is quite high. So I thought I'd uh, do a little video showing uh, what the cause of that is. Here's a closer look at the amplifier. It's a bit rough at the moment because I've been spending a bit of time uh, taking components on and off trying to find this intermodulation distortion problem. Intermodulation distortion is quite high and sideband signals through this amplifier don't sound very good at all. The transceiver I'm building contains a two-tone test signal generator built in. That's uh, very convenient for testing the transmitter um, performance. Here's a closer view of the little panel on the side of the case alongside with some microphone drive and compressor controls. So switching the transceiver to transmit, this is the output of the transmitter. It's running currently about 1 amp through the amplifier and the bias is set at 200 milliamps as per the Motorola notes. Now you'll notice the intermod distortion is quite high. I found the reason for the intermodulation distortion was the fact that the regulator circuit was unable to provide sufficient base current to keep the transistors in the AB uh, class of operation. So as a quick fix I used a power diode and a 100 ohm resistor from the 12 volt rail to provide a steady a fairly strong bias source for the two MRF454s. So now we see a much cleaner in, uh, intermodulation distortion result. Here I'm winding the power up. We're now, uh, well, first of all we're getting a lot more power out of the amplifier we're now able, before we couldn't get more than about 10 watts out of it now we can get uh, quite a lot more power I haven't quite measured it just yet but there's the two tones so there's the uh, two tone envelope now you don't see the chopping off at the crossover point I should say with the 100 ohm resistor the standing current's quite high it's over an amp the normal uh, bias for these FETs, uh, transistors should be around about maybe 200 to 500 milliamps. I've now reduced the bias current to around about half an amp using a four, 430 ohms worth of resistance between the 12 volt supply and the bias diode. And that's the uh, intermod. There's the uh, two tone waveform. Intermod's still not bad, it's not as good as before. You see the sides coming up, but it's still not bad. So we're probably looking at um, 30 dB. And under these conditions, the amplifier is pulling about 3 amps, as before. But uh, you can see here the extra resistance to get that bias current down. So the next step is to find out why this regulator is unable to provide the required current, base current. It's been built as per the design. I may have made a mistake somewhere, I'll double check everything, but I've had a couple of checks and everything seems to be as per the design. Uh, continuing on with the intermodulation distortion on the MRF454 amplifier, I had another look at the 723 regulator circuit and I noticed that the uh, in the design notes there was a 1 ohm current limit resistor for the 100 watt version. I've replaced that with the uh, half an ohm resistor which is for the 140 and the 180 watt versions and found that that is now much better. I've now adjusted the, the bias so that there's 100 milliamps per transistor and if I switch on the transmitter you'll see the improvement in intermodulation distortion. So currently pulling about 6.5 amps um, which is uh, about 70 watts DC input. So there's the uh, two-tone, quite different, and there's the intermod distortion. That's at uh, 
a bias current of 200 milliamps. I can increase it slightly. Um, there'll be a point where there's no further improvement. I've now increased in the bias uh, current. And you'll see the there's a bit of a fall there. There we go. And you'll see the waveform getting better. That's probably too far. We're drawing about 8.6 amps now, so we're really pushing the trend. This is a bit hard. So if I just drop it back, you'll see it's not a bad. You'll see that particular product drop off as I'm pulling it back. And if I keep going below the 200 milliamps, you'll see the intermod start to creep up. Now it's getting pretty bad. And We'll just uh, switch off the transmitter and measure the uh, measure the current without modulation, and the bias the bias is is saying zero. So that is the uh, current going into the amplifier. As I increase the uh, bias, you'll see it um, the current rise. Remember that's where it was where the intermod was quite bad. As we adjust the uh, the 72 rego you see the bias uh, the current going up and that's where I started around about 0.2 of an amp and it wasn't too bad so that's uh, one tone at that bias level and that's two tone with the one tone we're drawing uh, 5.66 amps and we switch on the second tone it rises to 6.5 amps so the intermod product is around about 30, maybe 33, 34 dB down, which is to be expected. And there's the um, two-tone uh, signal on the waveform monitor. A little bit of noise on there. Not sure where that's coming from. Uh, and that's with the bias current of um, 200 milliamps. In other words, the bias has been set that, so that without a signal into the amplifier the amplifier is drawing 200 milliamps uh, out of interest this is the waveform coming out of the amplifier it's currently drawing 6.8 amps into 50 ohms and um, that's what the waveform looks like uh, here are some power measurements at uh, 7.3 amps the RF output is 25 watts. At 50 watts, the current is 10.53 amps. And at 100 uh, watts, the current is just over 115 amps. I'm now passing the transmitter on 3.6 megs through the, trans the transceiver low pass filters. Currently, it's putting out 20 watts and then we're drawing 7.9 amps so that is the spectrum I'm currently on 5 megs per division 3.6 megs is the signal and that's what we're getting out so we're looking at uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 maybe 60 dB this is the uh, spectrum it's still at 20 watts without the low pass filter 3.5 megs that would be 7 megs, second harmonic third harmonic fourth harmonic and so on so the second harmonic is 10, 20, 30 about 35 dB down but the second harmonic is only about 20 dB down I increase the power that's 25 that's 20 watts if I just go up a bit more that's 50 watts 50 watts and that's 100 watts there I'll just drop it back down that's uh, 10 watts, that's 5 watts, and that's a couple of watts. This is a view of the back of the transceiver where the PA is going to be mounted. The PA feeds a set of 8 low pass filters for all the handbands uh, under software control. A small fan will be fitted at the back of the, the PA amplifier blowing cool air over the semiconductors. So there's a wide view of the case from the side and the swing out modules.